Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to see about automatic code documentation with the tool called Docsigen. If you have a practice of documenting your important information of the code inside the comment blocks like this, say uh, parameters to be passed to an API call like that or uh, you manually type that in a text file or a word document, then do watch this video. Explaining the Docsigen in Linux will provide much better understanding when compared to Windows. Also, uh, the GUI version will be predominantly used in Windows and uh, I'll be covering that in the end of this video. So getting into the topic, Docsigen is a freeware and is available for all OS environments like Linux, Mac or Windows. And uh, this is widely used to document the C and C++ codes. And decoding the data which need to be documented is done with a special commenting format which we will see in this video. The code documentation is done in two formats, so one will be in a HTML way and uh, another one is a latex format and with the latex format we can uh, easily convert that into a PDF also. Now let's begin with the installation of Docsigen, we can do that with the sudo apt-get install command. I have already installed the Docsigen in my Linux environment so it shows nothing to be installed here. Anyways you can check the version of Docsigen with the command docsigen iphone version. We have some 1.9.1 here. As said, the decoding of the data is kind of done with a special commenting format, and uh, now we can see what are all the uh, supported formats there. Considering the C and C language, three major commenting formats are used. So, the first one will be C style format, so that goes like this, and uh, the Qt format is also supported. And the third one would be multi-line commands. So this is also recognized as a, a Docsigen command. You can use any of these formats whichever you are comfortable with. Okay. Now let's move to the coding part. I have written a sample C++ file. It's just a simple one to understand uh, the Docsigen commenting things. I'll show you an example for uh, the documentation part done with this Docsigen tool. So you can search for OpenCV. So this is a, a widely known package for image processing and things like that. So the code is doc uh, kind of documented with this uh, Docsigen tool and this is how it looks after our documentation is completed. We can close these things and let's go to the sample code that we have already written. And this is the code and you can see the special commenting blocks are already included. By convention we will be using double slashes to denote the comment block in C or C++. So if you want to add a comment block which should not be documented, we can still add that inside the double uh, slashes. I have included some kind of three comment blocks here, the Docsigen comment blocks and um, yeah. So the most important things, the kind of parameters which are needed are covered in this part and I will be explaining them. All the Docsigen commenting blocks are optional and uh, we can add as per our need. The first block that I have included here contains file name and author name like that. So the file parameter holds the file name and the author parameter will be holding the author name like that. So apart from this we can include some kind of version information and uh, date. I am referring these things as a block since I have clubbed some 2 to 3 parameters and uh, mentioned them within a kind of block. So you can do that in a individual manner but that won't be an effective way of doing the documentation. Going to the next part of code we have brief parameter. So this is mainly used with the header file saying like this contains API calls or something like that. And we have a class parameter. Since I have used the classes here I have uh, defined those class parameters also. It just gives a small definition about what is the purpose of the class and we have param in which denotes the arguments that are passed through a function as an input. We can also include param out or simply we can use a add param so that also defines the parameters that are passed. Apart from this we have a another parameter called details that we can use to explain a part of what is the purpose of a part of code like that. And remember the commenting block should be placed above the code for which we are adding that as a comment. So this is a common understanding in case of Docsigen. Now more to the execution part, we have to create a configuration file. So the configuration file can be modified or customized to change the Docsigen's behavior. So this basically has some kind of information like input directories, output directories and uh, uh, what kind of a file format need to be considered for documenting and uh, things like that. 
meanwhile i have found the proper command to generate the configuration file here so the command goes like doxygen g so by default we don't need to mention any kind of uh, file name so the doxygen will create a configuration file with the default name as doxy file or else we can uh, specifically mention whatever file name that we needed i'll generate another configuration file just for uh, understanding here so yeah you can see that uh, another configuration file has been created so let us delete that one we don't need that as of now i'll open the configuration file now so that you can get a clear understanding about what and all can be configured so this is the default configuration file and we have multiple values like uh, doc file encoding so this by default it will be utf8 format and uh, we have a project name and uh, project number like that project logo we can uh, mention a logo and uh, for everything there will be a description just above that uh, particular parameter so you can see that uh, like language we can configure and lot of things like that as said by modifying the values that is available with the configuration file we can change the doxygen's behavior so yeah based on the need we can configure language or uh, we can specifically mention logo like that also we can run the doxygen without modifying anything in the configuration file also so that will just work fine so let us execute this file yeah now you can see that two folders have been created so one is latex and the uh, another one is html so the latex has its own format file and uh, yeah, it's mostly not in a readable format but uh, in html format we have a index file and we can open the index file and uh, it gener it's a kind of a web page so let's load the index file here and you can see the documentation has been done you can see that the classes that we have defined in the code has been documented here so their respective brief and uh, class description were documented properly so this is basically how it works and if you go into the respective classes you will see much more information you can see that the inheritance has been captured and also the functions and parameters that are available within the block of code were automatically documented by the oxygen so we have seen about how the doxygen works and the configuration file and things like that. I would like to talk about a couple of more parameters which might be useful for you in your coding part. You can document your macro values with the parameter that is at the rate of def. So all our parameters will be uh, starting with at the rate. So remember that one. And uh, the other things would be uh, return and uh, return values. I'll just write the parameters here at the rate of return so in the return we can say a kind of statement like that uh, like this ap calls returns uh, this number of uh, parameters or things like that in return value we can directly say that this is a parameter that will be returned from a method or a in from a respective api like that so whatever explained here would be enough to start working with our doxygen now let's see about the GUI version that is available with the windows so you can see here whatever we have configured in the configuration file so is collectively embedded in the GUI version and we can directly configure as per our need so this is the difference between GUI and command line versions